And to talk about some of the action, let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstat. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding newsletter, the Tiger Forex Report. Every Monday morning, he puts out updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out right under the newsletter tab at TFNN. You try it out. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. You got a couple webinars you get in there as well. So try that out, folks. And don't forget, he's got a couple of great webinars under the services tab as well. If you're into candlestick charting, Teddy's written an outstanding book on candlesticks. He did a webinar for us, Japanese Candlestick Patterns, Stock and Option Strategies. And he's also got one on calendar stock option spreads in the services section. Check those out. But boy, we're going to talk some action today. Teddy Kegstat, good morning. Good morning, Tammy. Uh, boy, where do you want to kick things off? It seems like the trend is intact from the last time we talked. We got yields dropping. Uh, we got the market trading higher, and we got a little bit of weakness in that dollar. Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, you know, <clears throat> everything you just said is actually right. happening right now in the marketplace, that's for sure. Um, you know, I think right now you got to look at these markets in a corrective phase still, and I think that the levels that we hit yesterday and today especially – we hit some key areas. So I think we're really, really what you have to look at now is what happens after today. So I think that the, the points that we've trended either up into or down into and the various FX crosses right now are, are very key areas. I think you can see either some stability or um, there are critical levels that if we take those out, um, then we're starting to look at these, uh, what is, I think, a corrective phase. It may not necessarily be a corrective phase anymore. So we're kind of at a very good inflection point right now. You mentioned some of those pairings. Which <laughs> ones you want to jump to? I mean, I was jumping around as you were doing it. Boy, the euro is on quite a uh -huh. trend right now. Even a little bit of a rollover on the dollar yen, although that one not quite as, as dramatic. Um, uh -huh. What parents are you looking at the most? I know you say that you know the dollar index is a basket, but sometimes that basket is behaving a little bit differently within it. Which ones are you really looking at there? Uh, well, I like the uh, the high in the pound today. I think that's a critical area. I think also the euro, U.S. dollar. It's just shy of a very good uh, price target, and these are these are key areas where I think that uh, it's. It wouldn't surprise me to see a little bit of a pullback and see a little strength in the dollar. Um, <clears throat> we had a sell signal in the yield curve on Friday that was negated yesterday, so but not by much. It's it's hovering, so the yields aren't exactly retreating. You know, they're kind of just buffering up against resistance, so they're not like piercing through that area trying to push the trend. And I think you really have to be observant of that. Like normally, you know, yields are a good indicator of especially FX movement. And right now they're kind of stalling. So I think that in this where we're at now, we're kind of at that inflection point where the currencies are breaking away from the yield uh, function. Um, and But the thing is, you can't break away that much. So if the yields just stay where they're at, if they're not going to continue to be in retreat, it's going to be very hard for the U.S. dollar to be under pressure. You know, So I'd be very cautious right now, especially if you see any type of uptick in yields, it's going to be very likely that you'll see a snap back in, these, in, the, in the various currency pairs versus the dollar. Yeah, the move's been pretty dramatic, man. We're under 4.3% right now on the 10-year. Um, we started at over 5%. And so is that part of the discussion there just in terms of the dramatic move we've had seven tenths percent on a 10-year man quite the pullback and we are sure. i just pulled up the 10-year as you were talking about i know you look at the 30-year as well a lot but pretty interesting on, on a price basis the 10-year basically back to that low in march almost to like the tick i got a low there of 110.12 and we're at 110.12 so we're running into some resistance on a couple levels but is that really part of that conversation just the the size of the move so quickly in yields from above five to four point three Absolutely. You are nailing it on the head right there. And especially like when you look at the 10 year and the shorter term rates, you know, <clears throat> they drive interest rates in the short run and they're pretty stretched. You know, I mean, is, is the market or are people happy with yields and retreat? Of course they are, you know, especially with the, you know, the uptick that we've had over the last year and a half. But if you really look at it on a, on a proportionate basis, you know, it, it's just a minor pullback right now, you know, and also you still have to look at it, like you said, if you're at March levels and you think about what's happened since then, unless we truly go to a pausing or dovish stance, odds are that we're pretty much at the cap of where we're going to be, you know, as far as the retreat on, on the yields right now, you know. So it's just uh, the, the fundamentals and the technicals don't add up for any type of extended rally. You know, I'm sure that anyone that if they're looking to buy a home or something like that or refinance it, finance if they haven't, you know, they're hoping for a Christmas gift and, and you know, having lower yields trend into the year, which very way may, may happen. But we have to really watch those numbers. If we have any inflationary numbers 
that you know stick out you're going to see i think the yields really rally very quickly you know so yeah. i think it's very sensitive right now you know so in as far as where we are at right now Sure. You know, I mean, everybody wants, you know, or thinks, you know, consensus wise is that the Fed is done. I would be very careful calling that, you know, that that shot, you know, never try and pick a top or a bottom. And I don't know about you, how things are in Florida, but I go to the store, too, like everyone else. And I don't know where this downtick in inflation is because prices at the store aren't going down. They're going up. You know, gas is re relatively stable, but um, <clears throat> I don't know anything out there that doesn't cost at least 50 to 100 or more percent more than it did just two years ago. Nothing's yeah. coming down, you know. So unless we see a retraction in pricing, you know, and I'm not saying necessarily deflation, but just some sort of retraction, um, where is this illusion that inflation has disappeared, you know? So I think it's just not, we don't have that force of inflation like we had in 2021 and 2022, you know? Um, so, but just because the velocity isn't there, it doesn't mean that inflation has disappeared. It's just the shock value, I think, is gone, you know? And I, I think you really have to be mindful of that. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how people try and get over that hump in the same way that, you know, you hear inflation's falling and that's really not the case. They just want the Fed just wants it to get back to where it's just going up by 2% off the numbers we're dealing with and so people um are going to be facing some higher prices going forward, man. It'd be interesting to see how the Fed may, you know, meanders that um as well. You talked about crude, you talked about gas. What do you think of the price of crude, man? A little volatility. We're stuck in the 70s right now, but crude up a bit off of the recent lows, pushing 76.94 on my chart. Yes, well, right now, especially the, the people who read the Tiger Forex report know that crude is right on our directional pivot level. So we fell below that. This is basically $77, 77 and a quarter level. And I think that it, above that, that's a very good support line. You know, if we can hold below that, I wouldn't say it's bearish, but I think you could bobble in the 77 to $70 range. But above 77, I like it going back up to like $85, $90 if we can sustain that trade. You know, I mean, I think that because we've had, you know, the um, what they're calling a prisoner exchange, which is really more of a ransom exchange going on in the Middle East, I think that's kind of put a pause on oil, you know, because of that. Um, but the tensions haven't stopped what's going on in the Middle East, let alone globally. So I, I'd be very mindful of of that when it comes to oil and i would be looking for more of an uptick in oil than a downtick and we will see man i definitely appreciate that price of the pump i'm sure we all do in the face yeah. of some pretty lofty uh, as you said that's the one thing right now that sticks out for sure teddy i appreciate the time as always man it's always a quick nine minutes folks check out the tiger forex report check out those outstanding webinars teddy has under the services tab and uh we'll talk to you next week man that was a quick nine Sounds minutes good. i appreciate it as always thanks tommy Thanks, Teddy. Folks, check it out. We'll be back to finish up the program. Don't go away.